Thank you very much. Speaking of which, so this is the February meeting of the Doylestown Township Public Water Sewer Advisory Committee. First uh, item on the agenda for the evening would be the uh, approval of the January minutes. Is there a motion to approve? John's making a motion. Second. I second that. <clears throat> Seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Second uh, topic on the agenda. Steph, do you have an update on uh, Pebble Woodridge that you want to share? Yeah. Um, Wally's coming in. Hang on a minute. Okay. He'll be joining in a second. Um, the updates continue to occur weekly on our township website under information Pebble Ridge Woodridge. Uh, Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority is making progress. Uh, they anticipate they should be done in the main part of the neighborhood in Pebble Ridge Woodridge, probably in early mid, mid spring, like maybe April, May timeframe. And the whole project, which would then include Alms House, Doe Run, and Militia Hills sometime in June. And so then sometime after that, we'll be able to reconcile, you know, all the bills and be able to send things out um, at that point in time. So, Good. but Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, Stephanie, you broke up a little bit. Can you tell me, um, because this was actually a question that came up like on our neighborhood Facebook pages, when, do you have a, a general time for when you think the bills are going to go out? And I'm sorry, I think you just said that, but it broke up for me a little um, bit. Sometime after they finish the whole project. And if they're done in June, then maybe later in the summer or fall. And if they're not, you know, completely done, you know, it, it'll just kind of roll accordingly, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, a friend of mine asked a question. Um, if a person sells a house in that community, Mm -hmm. um, are they required to hook up or is no. it required only if there's a failure in the um, mm -hmm. uh, septic outside uh, treatment system? Correct, John. If they're in the Pebble Ridge Woodridge, uh, the way the Were ordinance you able is, to hear that? Yeah, if they're yeah. in the if they're in the neighborhood, um, the ordinance is indicates that if the septic system is working at the time of sale, they do not have to hook up to the system. Okay, um, that was my understanding. Of yeah, if they want to hook up or if they need to hook up, that is always available to them. Okay. And the only thing I'll add to that is I would be shocked based on feedback that I've heard from people going to sell their homes if the bank didn't end or the mortgage company didn't end up requiring that they hooked up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. A friend of mine totally disagreed with me. That's what I had said. He said, oh no, it's mandatory. I, said, I don't think so. But you're probably it's not. Right. I think John, I think the confusion is is that in the Pebble Hill three Wilkshire and the Fountainville um, developments where we did sewers they were required at the time of sale to connect to public sewer. The Pebble Ridge Woodridge has a different wording in the ordinance. Yep, that's what I thought. Thank mm -hmm. you for the clarification. You are correct. So the real delay, by the way, in the Pebble Ridge, our area here, has been because of the easement. Um, and obviously all of us that live in this area, you know what happens, you know, once the thaw starts coming in, anytime it starts to get warm, the ground just turns to bush this time of year. And with all of the snow and the rain and all the other um, you know, moisture that's out there, it's making it virtually impossible. They, as a matter of fact, I think John Butler mentioned during our uh, subcommittee meeting uh, a week or so ago that they even had a piece of equipment, heavy equipment that got stuck back there that they had to get. <laughs> to that end, uh, it's gonna, that's the main holdup right now is strictly that. And there's yeah. nothing but, uh, but weather and clay. So, Acts of God. <laughs> so that's that. Um, anybody else have any questions regarding the, uh, the current project? Steph, then uh, on the 537, have we any further feedback from uh, either Bucks County or the engineers? Not at this point in time, no. 
but we'll we'll reach out to them. I know um, Joe and I were talking about how they can uh, do public outreach and um, how we want to go about that, and so we'll be we'll be talking to them about that. Can we have any questions there? All right, now we get into the uh, meat and potatoes of what we've been waiting for. Um, what I'd like to do is share, can I share my screen? Or, yes, you may. Bob, I have your present your PowerPoint teed up, unless you have it teed up, it doesn't matter which one plays it. Yeah, Bob, you're on mute. No, that's right. fine if you want to run it, Jeff. Okay, so let me, but you can walk us through it. Sure. And then Jen, I'll put your, uh, your uh, attach your links up that you had, if you could walk us through that and then I'll take you guys through what I've worked on so far. So just give me a second here. Certainly. <laughs> So just as a, as a primer to what Joe's gonna pull up, I, I had sent him a, um, a couple of wireframes of uh, what content might look like and start to sound like um, from the Doylestown Township site. And, you know, it's, it, you know, there's probably some, some logic in, in um, how we arrange content, but, you know, effectively addressing the idea that, um, you know, if, if you own a private well that, you know, for the good of your household, as well as the good of your uh, community, having it tested for whatever we sort of ultimately spell out is a good idea. And, you know, whether it's well hygiene or it's, you know, are there events that may trigger a specific reason for you to test, whether they disturb a well or they're digging around it or, and I found, I found, um, I did some research and I found uh, some content in um, in PA pages. I found some hey, in Bob, New Jersey. Bob, hang on just one second. I want to make sure. Does everybody see see the screen, the PowerPoint? No. Not yet. No. Okay, I have it up on my screen, Steph. Do I need to do? No, you should be able to share. I have it set for multiple participants. All right, hang on. Let me just see what's going on here. Hey, Dan. Hey, sorry, I'm late. My last meeting went long. I was like, I, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. <laughs> no problem. Um, all right, share screen. There we go. Okay, let me just bring it up on the full screen. And then Bob, you can pick it up and tell me when you want me to uh, sure. change the slide, okay? Certainly. Just give me a second here. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Bob. You're up now. Yeah. So, um, you know, in, in trying to find, you know, follow the the design protocol for the for the township site, all I did was I, I laid out a couple of pages and some, you know, I think what what I think to be some realistic content um, for those pages that give insight into not only private well ownership but um, testing and what have you. So really, just sort of an introductory page, but then also again staying within the stylistic. Um, uh, format that the that the township site manages, starting to talk about what the basics are. And again, this, these were just really my interpretation of, hey, how do we get someone to start to understand what they should be thinking about, and you know, how often do they test? So if we if we look at the you know the the well water testing basics, every one of those is obviously a question. Every one of those can sort of. Be effectively become their own page that we then answer, right? So if we wanna talk about whether it's well hygiene or it's, are there a series of events that occur around my well, should that force a specific testing, which is the next slide. Um, and, and that content is from, uh, I believe NJDEP, um, who I, they, they had a, they had a, um, their DEP site had a decent um, national map uh, that allowed you to go look at um, 
well testing uh, content from any any state, obviously that that that, that uh, from the from the map that they provided. So New Jersey went to a, a national, and then you could just click on the state you wanted to to research. So uh, this this is sort of a, a specialized reason. Like if you don't want to just understand for for peace of mind in your own household. Um, uh, there's obviously, if something happens around your well, that, that's, a, that's a special reason to go figure or, or, or go figure out testing. Um, and then beyond that, Joe, is the next one. You know, what, what should we be testing for? Um, whether it's coliforms or it's VOCs, um, I thought pH was sort of interesting because it never comes up, but it, I just sort of take it for granted, I guess. Um, but then obviously nitrites and, and, and volatile organics, that, that should be a... Um, yeah, actually on, New, on the New Jersey site, because I went in it from another point, from another point of view, you see later on, they actually require um, well testing of private wells. They started that back in 2002. They list 35 separate uh, di different contaminants to test for. Wow. wow. We'll see that when we when I get into my part of it later on, but I yeah, just thought yeah. that was uh, interesting to add on to what you were just talking about. Cool. So, so, so beyond these, um, beyond these pages are effectively more just questions to ask. How does water testing work? Are there licensed laboratories? Um, you know, how do I how do I remedy a, a, a positive report? So, I, you know, again, these are just sort of wireframe questions and. I would hope from all the content that we're able to collect, whether we're talking to, you know, Penn State's um, extension or we're we're picking it up from DEP or, or other states DEPs, that we you know we have sort of a look and feel and and does this sound right? Are, are we are we bringing enough content forward to be informative, obviously be helpful, um, and sort of give someone. You know, if they were going to walk away from this section of the site, do they have enough information to go take action? Right. There, there might be other goals for that, but those are the things that I thought about. Yeah, I like it. I thought it was a great beginning and tying into the look and feel of the existing uh, township website, also. Anybody other have any other comments regarding the, uh, the template that Bob shared here? I think it's a great template. How do we get people to go into it? That's the key. Yeah, that's what I was directing my attention to. Well, I think part of that's going to come from the township newsletter. So we were committed to having an article in the next in the next township newsletter, which um, you know I can definitely write with in conjunction with you guys, and you know within that. We'll be able to direct people if we're ready to, uh, you know, have that on the township website. If not, you know, to keep an eye out for uh, for that. Joe, did you get the draft of uh, that I sent for a possible? Uh... I did not. I got an email from Bob, and I got <laughs> I one from Jen on what she's worked on, but I didn't receive anything from you. <laughs> All right, I'll send you another. I sent it. To about a week after our last meeting. Okay, I apologize about that. Um, no problem, part of the email. Can look at my spam, see if it ended up there. It shouldn't because I'm part of your- uh, Yeah, it should have come straight through. Right, okay. all right, I will send another one through, but I I put the other, same idea, something to put in, I got the formatter ideas for the uh, website. Actually, okay. for, the, for the newsletter, excuse me. Well, if you want to send it to me now, I can, uh, it'll come right through to my email and we can include it in our meeting today. Okay, let me see, let me see what I, that's, that's, I'm electronically challenged, so let me see what I can find. Okay. Hey, hey Joe, the, yes. the last thing I would say is that there's, there's a missing slide um, and that's uh, residential home sales and well testing. So that was another topic I thought was worth <laughs> touching on. Okay. Uh, so like slide number 10 would effectively be that if, if we stuck to that outline of, of questions. And I, I included that on uh, maybe that's slide three. The questions there, I just I didn't I didn't build the, the 10th no. slide to include it. Okay. 
Oh, that's all right. We can, it's a definitely, it's a great starting point for us. Yeah. Does anybody have any qu uh, further questions for Bob before I move on to uh, what, uh, what Jen sent over? Jen, are you, you're still there, right? Jen? Okay. So I'm going to... Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, so we're sharing my screen. I have your email up here, and I was going to click on your links. You want to walk us through uh, what you have here? Sure. Um You want me to share my screen or my, my actually I'm my sharing your I'm sharing bit. it now it's just it's coming up okay here we go so this is what you got from uh, from Penn State and Wally I did get your email now it popped up on the screen so super Jen's done with her portion we can bring that up all right Jen you're on deck <laughs> Joe, I'm still seeing, and I don't know if anybody else is, I'm still seeing the PowerPoint from Bob. I still see your screen, Joe. Yeah, and I still see it as the hmm. PowerPoint. All right, hang on a second. Let me try. Let's see what's going on there. Let's see. All right, so let me see if I close that out. There. You see right. your pretty face. And, uh, let me go back to... All right, so let's try this. Okay, so you should see, do you see the Penn State extension now? Yes, we do. Okay. Do. All right, Jen, now you're up. First, sure. So um, I just reached out if you go on the Penn State Extension website, they have a very extensive education section um, all about uh, drinking and, and residential water. Um, they have probably 50 different articles on, on different topics um, that are already kind of in existence um, and pertain to Pennsylvania. Um, I did actually reach out to them to ask if it's okay if we reuse either pieces of what they've already written or you know pieces in their entirety and they said basically anything they've written is um fine for us to use as long as we credit them so i think that's going to be a really good resource for us um, i do yeah. also want to mention um they do also have a whole series of webinars um i had actually signed up back in the fall they had a series um it was called the it was called the water webinar Series. Um, and it was a series of six webinars. I was actually only able to attend one or two live, um, but then they sent me the links for the ones that I that I missed. And I only bring it up because one whole webinar was on removing arsenic uh, in drinking water. Um, and I know Joe had brought that up as a possible topic that we're interested in. Um, and then I, I also wanted to mention that when I went on right before this meeting, I was actually looking for other information to see what other webinars they had available. They're running a whole series of webinars now um, that are, it's private water supply education and water testing in like by county. So there's one for Clearfield County, there's one for Dolphin County, there's one for Bradfield County. Um, I, there's not one currently scheduled for Bucks. Uh, but I do wonder if we reached out to them, if they'd be willing to do one that's specific to kind of the contaminants that they're seeing in Bucks County. Um, it certainly seems like it's within their wheelhouse and something they would do. So if that's something um, that we'd be interested in, we could probably reach out to them and see if they'd be willing um, to do yeah. one that's catered to, to our area. If they do it, is it something that can stay on? That can always be... Uh... Yeah, it's not a one and done type. Yeah, I think um, the way their other ones work generally is that they'll do it live, but then they'll record it and then it lives on their website. So you can kind of go back and watch it. I mean, that's the way the webinar series that I took part in um, 
like I still have the links. I can share them with you guys if you want. I have the links to all six webinars in that series. Um, if, that you send those, if you can send those to me, Jen, I can share them with the group. Yeah. Yep. yep. And I like this idea. So, that it's going uh, to so yeah, into... I mean, I just, I, I think they're a good resource for a lot of information. A, a lot of the information that we're trying to collect, um, it seems like they've already, uh, they have a lot of it written if we want to use pieces of it. Yeah, I like the idea of getting them to do a study based on our area, which actually ties into an idea I was going to discuss with based on when we get to my portion of it, the um, the arsenic study that I'm going to share with you guys that I sent you the links for that was done in New Jersey was actually a project done through a college. And it was the college course what ended up being the project. So there were like five or six students that took place in that took part in the course and their whole uh project was to do the study on arsenic and groundwater and you know it'd be interesting i was thinking stephanie um of reaching out to delval and talking to them to see if they were interested in doing something with groundwater you know and uh, private well testing here in the township or this even this part of bucks county um sure. hopefully Doylestown townships in particular yeah, Jen, yeah. joe exactly we, what you were talking yeah joe we could reach out to um tanya casas who is on our environmental advisory council and is a professor at delval and the department head so we could reach out to tanya and i'm sure she would be able to help us and dan also is liaison to the eac so we have a good uh, connection oh, there. Um, and the other thing we can do at some point is perhaps um, if any of these videos, especially Jen from uh, Penn State, you know, we can show them on the DTV as well as having like this page on the website. Um, I think, you know, building building something, I like the idea of having a button on the website that's that, you know, falls under that information on, you know, wells and then just a slew of information, places to go, that kind of thing would be great. Jen, you got anything else you want to share here? Do you want me to open up the other link also? I, I mean, I think this kind of gives you a general idea. Um, you know, he had sent this particular link. Oh, sorry, can you guys hear me? I have terrible internet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Um, he had just sent this particular page as one that's one of their most accessed pages, but really this the page that you have pulled up is just sort of a collection of all their most popular articles. It's sort of a landing page um, and there's a lot of different articles within it. Um, so we may need, if we wanted to use it, we may need to use, um, you know, we may need to decide which sections within that landing page we want to use. Um, so there's a, a ton of information. Yeah, this is, this in particular, this is, there's a lot of great stuff here. Yeah. So when um, are, are if if we were to include their their research on the Doylestown site, uh, does it do we have to if essentially footnote it, or mm -hmm. how, what what's their guidance? Um. So hold on. Let me pull the email that he sent me. He said, you can use those Penn State Extension resources. You just need to give credit to Penn State Extension and the URL where the, the original resource resides. Okay. So it sounds to me like we can copy and paste in full if we want, as long as at the bottom it says, this information is courtesy of Penn State Extension with the link to the original page on their site. That or you can just use the, the original link. Yeah, I would say the original link just work. And just have the link take them right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw so I would encourage everybody on the committee to to between now and our next meeting 
go through the links that uh, that Jen has shared, along with what's inside of each of these links, and really take you know drill down and take a look at what's available through Penn State, and you know let's determine how how we want to be able to utilize it. You know, again, our goal is to make sure that we have something that's you know uh, concise and you know straight and to the point. We don't want to confuse, cause a lot, you know, we don't want people to get overload either. Right. I will say that the Penn State website is almost overwhelming. It's almost, um, it, it borders on too much information um, because it's hard to decide what's the most important pieces. Right. So I look at something like this, you know, testing your drinking water, you know, that makes sense. You know, interpreting the, the video on the uh, water test report. But I don't know that you need to have the chain of custody and, you know, some of the other uh, more detailed stuff that's in there. But, but yeah, so we should, uh, I, I would encourage everybody to go through and this way we can decide what components we want to use and what we don't want to utilize uh, during the next meeting. Okay. Jen, you have anything else on this? I don't. I actually need to step away for a second just because uh, my daughter was out sledding and now it's dark and she's not back. So <laughs> All right. All right. I'll Go be right her. back. I just need to call her. <laughs> no worries. Thank you again, by the way. That's fabulous. All that information you got there. Yeah. Wally, if you give me a second, I will uh, no problem. bring up your email. You will give us uh, Jen's links though, won't you? Yeah. 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 I'm going to, as part of the follow-up, I'll get you her links and anything else that comes up during a meeting. What I'll do is you'll have Bob's PowerPoint presentation, Jen's links, anything that's in your email, I'll, I'll pull it all together into one, one correspondence. Okay. I go back to sharing the screen. Okay, Wally here. You guys, everybody see Wally's email? No? Yeah. John, everybody else, you guys all see it? Yes. Yeah. Except only part of it, the, the right-hand side. All right, but Wally, you want to walk us through it? Yeah, basically, uh, I got in touch with uh, Doug Neese at uh, Neese Plumbing. Yeah. Uh, and I spent a lot of time with him. He's got a lot of information, but that's more on the remediation. So what I did is, can you go down? Yeah, I'm down at the bottom, but there's no links here. I can't see this here where it says, do you know what might be in your drinking water? Yeah, that's the, that's yeah. the. There's no, you didn't send me, there's not an actual file to click on. Well, it, it was on the, but I sent you. So let me see what I can. Here you go. You know what? I found your original email. It was buried. So okay. here, if I open up this one. Yeah, that, I just sent you another link. The, uh, it has the attachments. So let's try this. Okay, does everybody see a document that says, do you know what might be in the water we drink? No? No. no, still see the email. Okay, let me try this. Hang on. Um, Joe, I give you a lot of credit. Hang on a second. All right, here it is. All right, now do you guys see it? Yep. Okay. yep. All right, go ahead, Wally. 
I just lost it. You should be right there. You know, it should be on your I, screen right in front okay. of you. Okay. But basically what it is, I just wanted to, this, we were talking about uh, information for the newsletter. And I tried to make it like short and sweet, but enough to let people um, want to get, perk their interest to go and look further. And this is where we could, if, if you like the idea, we can, uh, maybe Stephanie can help clean it up a little bit. But, uh, you know, just something that says, you know, that your, we like your, we like our water. We don't know what's really in it. And we really should do more. And as we said, at the bottom, uh, you should be your water should be checked at least once every five years. And then we can we can put down uh, some of the things you have to test for, or some of the remediation or ways, what um, equipment you can buy. So I think what I can do with this, Wally, is I, I can incorporate some of this into the newsletter article. Correct. That's that, that's basically what it was. It's just sort of right. give you a, some draft ideas for the newsletter, so you don't start from a blank piece of paper. All right. Let me bring up your other uh, your other attachment. No, that, that's the same one. It's the same one. I keep. Okay, I sent, so it's all together. I sent you a. Um, yeah. Gotcha. I couldn't couldn't get the word. I put it okay. Away. Well, like I said, I think that works. That works to, uh, again, use that as part of the foundation for what we put into the uh, into the article. Yeah, because I'm, I'm afraid we don't want to scare people. And I think if we give them too much information up front, they're, they're just going to poo-poo it. But I think we've got to get their interest and their concern. Exactly. You may okay. want to put in the article that, you know, that the group is working on, you know, is looking into the well water information and we've gathered information and we're going to create a spot on the website with yeah. links to, you know, various places, the Penn State extension information, things like that. And maybe expand the article a little bit um, to be informative as, as to what links and where, where they can go to find more information. I think that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, what caught my eye as I was starting to uh, to do some research um, ties into an issue that we're having in the Pebble Ridge Woodridge area at the moment. We're finding, as part of the sewer project and as part of putting public water in the ground, that there's naturally occurring arsenic in the soil in this in at least the Pebble Ridge Woodridge area that we're working in. Really? The state of Pennsylvania within the last year has, or I guess the DEP in Pennsylvania, has uh, listed arsenic now as one of the, um, I don't know, Stephanie, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they've determined it's a bad, bad to have it in the soil. Yeah, they, they, and they lowered the limit that you can have in the soil and how you go about disposing of it as well. Right, to the point where, believe it or not, we've, uh, where it's costing a significant amount of money and it was actually part, some of the delay that Bucks County had in putting the, uh, the pipe in the ground recently was trying to dispose of the soil that was contaminated with arsenic. Matter of fact, uh, John Butler mentioned during our last uh, meeting that they actually had to move some of it to a piece of property that they Bucks County owns until they can find a, uh, a, a, a landfill or someone that will actually take the soil. So it's getting very difficult to, uh, to, to deal with this. And, you know, suddenly I started looking through New Jersey site. One of the links that you're gonna see is that back in 2001, um, New Jersey put a private uh, well testing act into place that um, that they formalized in 2002. And it's really interesting as you go through, because as I mentioned before, when you look at the links I sent you, you're going to see that New Jersey identified 35 different uh, different elements to test for in uh, in well water. 
And what New Jersey requires is at the time of sale of a house that private wells have to be tested. It's mandatory. I thought we determined that we were not going to be able to do that uh, oh, no. uh, in the township and that uh, uh, um, it was not palatable with the supervisors. No, you're right, John. I'm not saying that we were changing course. I was just pointing out that when you read that, you'll see the link that, you know, clearly New Jersey identified private wells as a uh, something that needed some sort of oversight. So they enacted, you know, legislation that at the time of sale of a house. So I'm not saying we would go in that direction. I just thought, I think you're going to find some of the information interesting on the website as they especially talk about the effects on arsenic and in, in drinking water. And I think that uh, as part of what we put together, again, not to scare people, to educate people, yep. um, you know, may also, uh, may also help some residents in deciding when DTMA approaches them and asks them if they're interested in public water for their part of the community. You know, some residents might, might be encouraged to get their, you know, private wells tested a little more often or it might also help with people deciding that, hey, you know, I don't want to deal with this. Maybe I should just hook up to public water and, yep. and be done with having to worry about you know, the quality of my own well. But Joe, may I just uh, indicate what I came up with totally different? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, and I'll just show you here because I printed it out. <laughs> but my tactic was, you know, I think, um, some of the neighbors uh, that, that I've known, uh, some read the newsletter and they don't go too deep in it. They may or may not go into the website. How do we catch their attention? And either through a flyer with uh, the newsletter or uh, I don't know if we put uh, a, a, a little uh, brief thing, um, bulletin boards in the um, shopping center of the shops. But what I did was just had five, six statements, and it's, the one was, what's in your well water? The next statement, municipal supplied water is tested regularly and indicate what they test for. And then say, you know, township well water requires only fecal chloroform testing every three years because some people think my water's tested. Do you know what you're consuming? and then have contact, website, telephone numbers, and what have you, to now go into the sites you that have been shown, but to catch their interest into going to those sites and reading more. Hey John, I agree. I think we can use those bullets as part of the article that we put in the township newsletter. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering how do we get them to get into that letter? In other words, uh, how many people are really interested in reading that newsletter? How many are, you know, looking at the website? That was um, that was my direction. You know, Stephanie, that's a good question. I always read the township newsletter. I always have. Yeah. Um, I think it's a, it's first of all, it's very well done, and it's got a lot of really good information. Stuff you're not going to find in the intelligencer. Um, but what do we, uh, what type of feedback do you have on regards to, you know, how people reading the, the newsletter itself when they receive it? You know, it's a mixed bag on that. Um, it, we know when people are calling and following up on things that they've read in the newsletter. So it is positive. It does go to all of the households and yes. bundles are taken to, um, group housing, like the apartments at Stonington Farms and at, um, Grundy Hall and places like that. So it is um, given to, you know, over 6,000 parcels in the township. So at least, you know, we can say that it's been, you know, delivered to everybody. Um, also, you know, um, social media in putting things out there as tweets and on Facebook with links back to the website or a video or something is really helpful. 
And, you know, we see citizen engagement that way. I mean, one of the things we're doing right now, um, which you can find on the website, we're doing two, two citizen engagements this, this month alone. One is on the Park Rec Community Building, which is a Zoom call on the 25th with the consultants that's open to all the residents. And the other one is a, um, what we're calling a virtual meeting room on a bike hike trail program. And that's on the website and will be up there that people can go and view it for a two week period from the 14th to the 28th. So, you know, the, the goal here, John, I, I am listening to what you're saying and I agree. We wanna have citizen engagement on this. We wanna make sure that the residents um, hear what the Public Water and Sewer Advisory Board is talking about and how important you know, safe drinking water is, whether it's coming from the DTMA as a public water source or whether it is your own well. Um, and testing that um, well regularly um, and not, you know, we're saying, you know, possibly not just for fecal coliform, but possibly VOCs and, and other contaminants that, you know, occur in our area. Steph, when you have something, um, once you have things on the township website, do you actually have a service that, that tracks what people are viewing on the website? Like if they click, yes. click mm -hmm. and everything's getting? Yeah, we can, we, um, we have some analytics that we, you know, Aaron, our special projects coordinator can call upon and, and check to see how many views are, are being done, how many times they've gone to a certain page, um, that kind of thing. So we, we do that, we share that information with our telecommunications advisory board. So John, I think that's part of your answer there. So once we get the, besides the article in a newsletter, once we get it up on a website, we can actually take a look at the analytics and how successful we are in getting people to view it. Okay. Uh, Joe, okay. Why, Joe, also, why don't we, if we, the newsletter, if we take that article, maybe we can get the uh, Intel and the Herald to also publish it. That would also hit another group of people. Yes, I think that's important. I, I, I'm thinking right now you're looking at relying on people to read the article in the newsletter and perhaps go to the website. I'm saying, I'm not sure that's going to only touch a few. I think we got to reach out further and have some other mechanism. Wally, I think you have a good point. Uh, why not put it in the newspaper? Have all the more, more attention we get, the more conversation, the more people that are starting to look at it, the better. So my only, my, my only question there is that we make sure that um, as we write something, that um, you know, not only that we all agree on it, but that we put it, you know, run it through Stephanie. Oh, no and, question. Or that, uh, you know, well, basically I don't want the intelligence here to take something that we mean is good and try to twist it around. <laughs> <laughs> News media has a chance, it seems to be able to do that very nicely. No, I don't want the, I don't want the, the headline to suddenly be, you know, Doylestown Township, you know, has arsenic or, or water into well water in Doylestown Township isn't any good, whatever it may be. Yeah. So, just to, I like the idea, but uh, let's just make sure that, uh, you know, we all work together on the final product. And um, like I said, that it has township approval before we approach anything in the uh, newspapers. Okay. Makes sense. There's also kind of like a newspaper website called the patch yeah. that you can, you can post things, um, you know, verbatim, as opposed to like, I don't know that the Intel will publish something that the Herald it might publish just what you send them, um, you know, verbatim, but the Intel probably wouldn't. Yeah. Um, but the, the patch you can just go on, anyone can just go on and post kind of a community, okay. uh, community yeah. news there. So that's another resource also. Well, that's but, what I, I and I think we would, We'd want to make sure that the board is okay with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everything that we do has to have board of supervisor approval anyhow. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, but I was hoping just a few bullet points like that could could create an interest that digs further. Right. And to, yeah, John, you know, I would do that through social media. That would be the way to market it 
and yeah. do it through social media. And this may be what I mean, market it and then, yep. So by the way, I wanna, I'm just gonna step, do a quick step to the side for a moment, only because something that Stephanie just said reminded me of something I wanted to bring up to everybody's attention tonight. So the Board of Supervisors during their last meeting did touch upon wanting all of the, um, the committee chairs to make sure they went over and reminded everybody basically of, of what their committees are charged with. So just as a reminder to all of yourselves that the Public Water Sewer Advisory Committee and that word advisory is extremely important that what our committee does is to make a determination if there's a need for public water or public sewer in any part of the township. And that recommendation is then taken to the Board of Supervisors for action. And that's the, the process. So anything outside of the scope of what I just stated there would require approval from the Board of Supervisors before we even looked in a different direction. Okay. Stephanie, did I? Uh, I think so. Dan, do you want to share anything else with the committee, the committee regarding that? No, no, I actually think this committee is one of the better ones about really coordinating with other groups in its purview. Um, to we, you bring Keith Haas in a lot to talk about uh, water. So I think this uh, group works really well together with some of the other um, committees, which is one of the concerns we've had. Um, and we talked a little bit tonight about how the EAC might fit in to some of the stuff we're doing as well. Uh, so it, like, like Willis mentioned, making sure things go through the chair uh, to our staff is important. And um, yeah, just making sure we work with the other committees and not trying to bend other committees to the will of one <laughs> of uh, our thinking kind of thing, which is, uh, starting to become a little bit of a habit, but again, not something I really noticed with this committee specifically. Okay. And actually, Dan, to that point, could you um, either make a email introduction to myself and Tanya or provide her contact information so I could reach out to her? Yeah, Tanya Cassis, right? Yes, yes. please. Because mm -hmm. what I'd like to do is reach out to her and then possibly uh, invite her to even take part in our next uh in next month's meeting. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Note of that now. Appreciate that. So stepping back now in from uh, a little uh, aside there, um, what I would, same thing with the links that Jen had provided. If you get a chance, take a look at the links that I provided you all with regards to the uh, New Jersey site. Again, there's a lot of information there. The arsenic uh, in your well water is only one component of what's on their site. Um, but just like the videos that Jen had shared with us, same thing here. There's a lot of different videos on the site that walk you through. And these are some of them you can see on the screen in front of you. I'm not gonna play them. You guys can play them at your, uh, at your leisure. But um, same thing here, again, not wanting to cause overload. If, if by our next meeting, if everybody could take a look at the different links between Jen, myself, what um, um, taking that into account with the outline that Bob created and so that we can start pulling this together, not only for the article, but starting to lay the groundwork for what the website could, uh, or the, our page <laughs> website could look like. And Stephanie, once we have that together, who do we work with to, uh, to build that on the website? It'll be Aaron. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Right, does anybody else have any, anything they want to bring to the floor at the moment? No, just one minor point on the notice that we put out or the article. Um, we probably should make something, when we mention arsenic, I never realized it, but uh, it's natural in soil. And I yeah. think maybe, maybe that should be noted that so that people don't think it's something that, uh, you know, that has to be put in by, it's man-made, it's not. It's, it's, that's something that's natural in the soil. So just a, a point. No, it's good. I mean, because, you know, when you mention arsenic to me, you know, 
I think of, you know, some <laughs> Arsenic and old lace, the movie. Yes. <laughs> but he's tea, and all of a sudden they're, you know, no longer amongst us. <laughs> okay. uh, Joe, do we, hmm. do they, um, uh, any idea where this arsenic came from? Is it natural or was it? Uh, naturally. Oh, naturally. Natural. Really? Well, Rather than be... off site and, and, and polluted. Well, it's only, John, it's only because DEP identified it as a contaminant this last year yep. that is even an issue. It's sort of like how the PFOAs and the PFOS and the drinking water wasn't an issue until a couple of years ago when it was added to the list of um, things you had to test for in drinking water. Right, but but um, I was wondering if somebody had been using arsenic at that site or is there any no, the concentration all... such or is that... No, nope, it's all it's all been determined to be naturally occurring in the soil in the area. Really? Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, hey Joe. So yes, Bob. So for, for next uh, for for next meeting, um, uh, from all the content that you share with us, uh, from from the research that's been done and the links and, and what we now have access to, um, your ask is to be able to come back to the meeting with effectively an outline to say. Here's, here's what we think makes sense uh, to include, um, whether we write it, it's coming from another site or, and we're, you know, we're gonna attribute it or what have you, but effectively come back with recommendations on content so we can then move forward uh, and not only author the newsletter, but then at least be able to have a, pretty good idea of, of what content should be on the on the site that that's exactly correct okay um, what am my my goal would be that when all of us get together next time that some of the bullet that all, you know each of us has bullet points and a lot of them hopefully will be overlapping um to help build that content out and i and, and i think the, the spirit the spirit of the ask is how do we how do we position it that we're, we're trying to inform and help residents not necessarily scare them or, or whatever, but it's exactly. a resource for consideration. Yeah, but it's an educational material. And, um, you know, we should look at it from, you know, like a 10,000 foot level, not something we don't want to get into great detail about, you know, mm -hmm. where the contaminants come from, how they get into water, you know, it's a higher level than that, just to get people's interest to, you know, what, what, what you know, to Wally's point and to John with their, with their bullet points, what's in my drinking water or what could be in my drinking water? Starting there. Yeah. And I, I don't think we should scare people that the township might eventually be putting in a mandate. I don't think that's necessary to put in now. Just be no, more, it's not even on the board of supervisors radar from the yeah. last I attended, so. Right. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right, everyone. If there's, unless there's anything else. I have will, a, just a few quick things I'd like to mention, Joe. Yes, Dan. Uh, I made notes of through the week. Um, sure. First is just an update uh, for this board. The last uh, board supervisors meeting, we a, approved a small flow treatment facility for a home on uh, Short Road, which would be the third phase of the sewer project um, of the the 537 plan. I just right. wanted to mention that. So we're thinking about that. Um, what that scenario was is their septic system was failing. There's no sewer there and they had no other options other than to put in this, um, this small flow treatment facility, which is essentially like to my understanding is a small uh, sewage treatment plant operated by an individual owner. So just as a heads up, uh, on that to keep in mind as we go forward. The other thing I wanted to ask this uh, committee's opinion about, uh, Supervisor Herring had mentioned at the last meeting that we have the, the uh, three-year cycle testing and we have delayed that uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, issues delaying uh, Bucks County Health Department from doing testing. And they have still not brought their system up uh, to speed. So we were discussing about possibly delaying the 2020 testing again, but I wanted to 
ask this group's opinion if you have one if that's so if you think that's a wise idea or that we're pushing it too far out if we delay it again well Dan, i don't can see I just further clarify okay. a little bit sure. um we did talk about at the last meeting aaron brought information and um jenny had notes that the well water testing pricing um which everybody goes to a lot of people go to um bucks county health department for that we do have other um testing facilities that are competitive right. um now a lot most of the people in cycle two and this was affecting cycle two we're already into cycle three and cycle three is you know kind of on path they have they have till the end of the year and we haven't really done anything with cycle three it was just cycle two so yeah i mean that, i just want to put that in perspective is to follow up on Dan's comment. Well, the spirit of the initiative never was hinged upon the fact that the uh, Bucks County Health Department offered the service. It just so happened to be a convenience that coincided with it. So to keep with the spirit of it, um, I think I, I would encourage the Board of Supervisors to move forward with the testing and keeping the schedule um, as best it can and not pushing it off further. I agree especially if there's an alternative there are alternatives out there that are within the same dollar range as the health department so we're not putting an extra burden on the uh, on the residents okay great i actually and i really appreciate that insight from you guys on that yeah makes sense so, so stephanie i actually had in the notes um that when we talked about this on the last meeting that aaron was going to contact uh, some of the water testing places to see if they would offer any kind of discount. Do you know if anything ever came of that? I don't think it, it anything really came of it. They didn't, you know, we can reach out again, but they didn't seem to jump on that. I'll follow up with him on the, on that, but you know, the, the prices are competitive um, with the health department, you know, within a few dollars. Jeff, I guess one other point I would bring up with it to keep the, uh, I'm not sure where these other places are located, but mm -hmm. would they be able to coordinate that through the township building at all? Like having test kits there that uh, residents could just drop off. So there's one central point to drop them off and then the testing company can come pick them up. Hey, we can talk to them about that. I mean, chain of custody is very important in these things. So I know some of them will come to your house um, a lot of the privates will actually come out to your house. So okay. charge involved. Yeah, but we can we can see about test kits at the township. And there's also a time element. If if the sample ages too long, it becomes not as accurate. Good point. Okay. The uh, the last question I had, and I believe you guys still have there were. If I recall correctly, there are maps at one point that showed the different water outflows across the township, correct? When you say outflows, are you talking about the stormwater outflows? Uh, yeah, stormwater outflows specifically, but I'd also be interested in if we have the uh, some of the septic outflows as well. And I'm asking because the EAC is taking an interest in some of the stormwater management program stuff. So if we already have some of those maps existing, to um, share them. Dan, I'm checking real quickly, but I want to say that on the website, and I have to find it, um, and it might be under the information as well. Um, uh, uh, maybe it's under. Anyway, that we have a whole thing for stormwater and we have all the stormwater reports from GHD. Okay. So the reports are on the website, which would have all the outfalls that um, GHD goes to and does all their testing from. And all that data mm -hmm. going way back is also on the, um, you know, is on the website as well. Yeah, okay. we use those, uh, Dan, we use those maps when we looked at uh, phases two and three also to right. look at uh, where there was fecal coliform in some of the discharges. And it was also used a lot in the Pebble Ridge Woodridge also 
Okay. Yeah. Dan, you asked about septic tank outfalls. Theoretically, it should go into the uh, groundwater and not have a specific point of discharge. I, so, I know it's theoretically, uh, yes. <laughs> and it's on their they, property. If there is an outfall, yeah. we got a big problem. Yeah. All right. Probably uh, a few people that have some, um, what did Andy, the guy from the <laughs> health department, used to say wildcat systems yes. where people have had problems on site and they've taken it to the woodland in the back and discharged unfortunately that does happen in the health department does catch that from time to time also the gray water people using gray water just for their laundry right hey jen i just wanted to bring something up too i saw your the look you had in your face when dan was describing a private on lot like a sewer system yeah what it is it's a stream a stream discharge so if you in intermittent stream discharge uh, system. We've looked at them in the past. And if you're, and if anybody's interested, I can know I'm sure I can pull them out of our notes from, uh, from prior years when we looked at them. Dan, what else do you have? That's all I got. I don't want to hold you guys up any longer. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody else have any uh, thing they want to bring in front of the committee? In that case, thank you. This is really very productive. You guys did a great job on uh, on gathering information, and I think by next month we'll be ready to start pulling uh, pulling it together. Good job. All right. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Bye now.